Working with crushed glass powders on sheet glass vastly expands the range of possibilities for blending color and creating imagery in kiln-formed glass. Powders allow you to create imagery, pattern, and nuanced shifts in value and hue more immediately and directly than when working with sheet glass alone. In this lesson, you will learn how to set up your workspace, apply powder, achieve subtle gradations of color and value, make lines, suggest dimension and modeling of light, create patterns and repeated imagery, and control the effects of temperature. All dusts can cause respiratory irritation. Dust from crushed glass powders present a special problem because they are heavy and difficult to expel from the lungs by coughing. Always wear a NIOSH-approved P100 or N95 respirator for filtering particulates. And work with local ventilation if possible. Almost anything can be used as a tool for applying and working with powders. The following basic tools are used in this lesson. Small cups, sifters, brushes, blending stumps, rubber-tipped tools, pointed tools, razor blades, templates, stencils, and glass tack, a glass adhesive. Before you begin working with powders, set up your workspace so that you can easily move your work and reclaim unused material. Lay down a piece of paper that is larger than the piece of glass you will be working on. Elevate the glass above the table so that you can easily pick it up once powders have been applied. As you apply the powder to the sheet glass, the overspill will land on the paper. This overspill can be collected after you've moved the glass. Simply lift and shape the paper to reclaim the material and store it for later use. Glass powders may be applied to sheet glass in a number of ways. For excellent control in creating a wide range of effects, use a fine mesh tea strainer as a sifter. First, load the sifter with powder, about three quarters of the way full. Then, grasp the sifter handle firmly in one hand with your thumb and finger close to the hopper. Next, tap the end of the handle with your other hand to dispense the powder. The harder you tap, the more material the sifter will dispense. Because you can hold the hopper relatively steady while tapping the handle, this method of sifting gives you good control. You will have less control if you hold the sifter in one hand and move the entire hopper from side to side. Or if you tap your hand on the hopper itself, which will cause it to move from side to side. To dispense the material as uniformly as possible, hold the sifter high above the sheet glass. If you hold it down lower, the application is likely to be much less uniform, even blotchy. Also, be aware of air currents in your work area, as they can both hinder and help in achieving uniform coverage or other effects. Always keep an eye on how much powder is in the hopper. As the level decreases, the powder comes from a smaller area within the hopper and it covers less area with each tap. This makes uniform application, if that is your goal, more difficult. After powder has been applied to the glass, it is relatively stable. Contrary to intuition, it will not easily roll or slide off the sheet glass. The granules of glass have irregular edges that interlock. 
they are not small spheres which would easily roll around. For this reason, it is not necessary to glue or adhere the powder to the sheet glass. Since the powder is not held to the sheet glass, you have tremendous flexibility in manipulating it if you so desire. The amount of powder to apply depends on a number of variables, such as the color in question, the intended effect, and the firing temperature. In general, when working with lighter colors, you will need to apply more powder than when working with darker colors to achieve adequate saturation. Likewise, when working with transparent colors, you will need to apply more powder than when working with opalescent colors. To achieve color saturation equal to standard 3 mm sheet glass, you will need to apply an equivalent weight of powder. This is because the saturation of the color depends on the thickness of the glass. Unfired powder has a lot of surface area and therefore occupies more volume for a given weight than does sheet glass. So to get powder saturation equivalent to 3 mm sheet glass, if that is your goal, you will likely need to apply about 4 mm of powder or for greater precision and repeatability, weigh the powder. Temperature also has an impact on how much material is needed. For example, at lower tack fusing temperatures, the powder will retain a lot of texture. This texture will scatter light across the surface, decreasing transparency and amplifying the effect of reflected color. In general, then, you will need less powder to create color at low temperatures than at high temperatures. To create a simple, uniform gradient of color from one edge of the piece to the other, sift powder along one edge, moving from side to side. As you work, raise the sifter higher and higher with each pass. This increases the area that the powder covers. While most of it falls along one edge, some falls out on the periphery as well. Pay attention to how thick the powder is becoming with the heaviest application, and how much is being deposited on the far edge. Gradients can either be long and gradual or abrupt, depending on your application method. Consider looking at the powdered glass on a light box or from beneath with light coming through the top to evaluate both the density and fluidity of the gradient. With dark colors, such as O100 black, you will see every grain of material after firing, so the slightest hint of powder on the lighter side of the gradient will be adequate. With lighter colors, such as 1116 turquoise blue, cover the sheet glass completely with powder, putting a thinner layer on the lighter side of the gradient. There are many ways to make lines using powders. This lesson will cover just a few of the possibilities. One method, known as graffito, is to draw lines into a field of powder. First, sift a uniform layer. An uneven layer will be modeled after firing, making it more difficult to distinguish drawn lines from the background. Then take a brush, a blending stump, a rubber tipped shaping tool, or almost any pointed tool, and begin to make your marks. Notice that making the marks is somewhat like plowing snow, with the edges of the lines building up more thickly. After firing, this variation may or may not show up, depending on the colors used and the temperature to which you fired. To make sgraffito lines without the snowplow effect, consider making a small pen attachment for a HEPA vacuum. While preventing the snowplow effect, this method makes it difficult to get high-resolution lines because the jagged edges of the powder grains cling to one another. You can also make lines by building them up 
or sculpting them with a brush or another tool. Experiment with a variety of paintbrushes to see which ones allow you to make the types of marks you want. Use more rigid and finely pointed tools for details. Use a razor blade to make lines with crisp edges. Make softer lines by pinching the material between your finger and thumb and then dropping it onto the sheet. You can also make lines using glass tack. Draw your lines, then sift powder on top of the lines until you can no longer see them. Then dump off the excess powder and reclaim it. Wait for the glass tack to dry and clean up the edges if necessary. Powders can be used in many ways to create the illusion of dimension. On one end of the range of possibilities, simple line drawings can employ the principles of perspective, overlap, and contour. On the other end, the modeling of light and shadow can be achieved by shading. For example, start with a simple gradient and then use a razor blade to create hard edges to either side of it. Or sift powder into various areas of a drawing to suggest shadows. Clean up overspill or use it to create atmosphere. You can also use a template, such as this circle, and fade from along the edges, favoring one side to create the illusion of a sphere. Powders are also ideal for creating repeated imagery or patterns. To do so, use stencils or templates. Almost anything can be used as a stencil. Shop tools. The rolled edge of bullseye sheet glass. Screens and other perforated sheet-like materials. And custom-made templates. Make sure your templates can be picked up with relative ease after powder has been applied. They should be rigid enough to support the weight of powders as they are being picked up. Copier paper, for example, will simply bend under the weight, dumping the material. Paperboard is a good material for making templates. To use the template, place it on the sheet glass then sift powder over the top to create your image. When finished, remove the template. Perforated materials, such as this mosaic backing paper, are ideal for making patterns in the same fashion. Multiple templates can be used simultaneously to build up layers of visual texture and pattern. or a single template can be used multiple times within the same composition to great effect. While the manner of powder application is critical to the outcome of the piece, the manner of heat application is equally important. Temperature can make a huge difference in transparency, hue, surface appearance, and texture. For example, pieces fired to the lower end of the tack fusing range will be very dry in appearance and have a rough texture. As firing temperatures increase, surfaces become less matte and textures soften. At higher temperatures, powders flatten out completely and surfaces become glossy. You may also add material to a work and fire it multiple times creating layers of imagery and texture by virtue of temperature. 
In short, an enormous range of subtlety and effect can be realized in the firing methods alone. Whether you're working with a single color and a simple technique, or multiple colors and a variety of techniques, powders provide vast territory for exploration and discovery.